You know, doing Southern Gospel News podcast has been a blessing and a fun time. I learn something every week when I'm on here, and it's a great thing. Southern Gospel News podcast has been a blessing to thousands. And without our sponsors, we wouldn't be able to continue to do it every week. My Pillow is one of those sponsors. Mike Lindell and the guys sent me a My Pillow about four weeks ago, and they said, "Before you talk about it, I want you to try it out." They said, "You got a money back guarantee, one hundred percent satisfaction, no no problems. You don't like the pillow, Darren? Send it back to us. They're even going to ask you when you call My Pillow your T-shirt size." No, they're not going to send you a My Pillow T-shirt, but it helps them in determining what type of pillow you need. They asked me when I got one, did you use a feather pillow or a down pillow? So they want to know what the best is for you. Right now, they've got a great deal on their Premier Pillow, and you can only get it by calling My Pillow today, 1-800-338-2330. 1-800-338-2330. When you're talking to them, enter the code or tell them the code SGNP. SGNP. Or you can always go to the website, MyPillow.com, order anything on there, but always use that code SGNP. MyPillow took care of me. They're taking care of you. And thank them for supporting Southern Gospel News Podcast. Welcome to one of the most listened to music news podcasts in the world, SGNP, with your host, Darren Sutherland. Join us as we talk with industry leaders, artists, and entertainers about their faith, family, and careers. This is information you will not find anywhere else on radio, web, or in a magazine, but only firsthand on SGNP. SGMP, Darren Sutherland here with you and my co-host, Mr. Arthur Rice from Sevierville, Tennessee, en route from Dollywood to park to the house or to the office or somewhere. Yes. You headed down the road, Hunter Arthur. Headed down to, yes, headed to the studio, actually. You know, think about this. Back when you first started singing, did you ever realize you'd be able to drive your car, Jeep, truck, whatever you're in, down the road, record on the other side of the country and do a podcast or a radio show or whatever you want it to be from no. one side of the country to another. No, no, no. really didn't. Hey, man, talking about youth in gospel music today. And we've well, got there's a, some good ones. There is I some mean. good ones. And I'm going to bring the historian, producer, slash all, all, all in port up person, Charlie, in with us today to talk a bit, little bit. Charlie, how you doing, my friend? Doing fine, doing fine. You know, when we talk, and we got an interview later today with uh, Children of the Promise, Eli and Jacob, Mm -hmm. and a good interview coming up with them later today. But when we talk about youth and gospel music, and let me go ahead and define youth and gospel music before we start. Charlie, I'm going to say 25 and younger. That's what the measuring stick we've kind of used for interviewing people for this segment that we've been doing the past few Tuesdays, and we've got one left next week, and that's going to be with the Hayes family. Mylon Hayes' kids are going to be on with us next week. Good, good group of kids. Mm-hmm. But uh, you know, kid, Mylon started that way. Mylon started Milan. that way, and, and his right. sister started that way. Yep. But when we talk about teenagers in gospel music, who's some of the ones that y'all think of right off the t- top of your head that really made a name? You mentioned one earlier, Charlie, in the pre-show that hit me probably harder than anybody, and it was their best group of people, and that was the Greens. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Kim, Tony, and Tim. They were hotter yeah, than firecrackers. they really came along. I mean, did, did it, when I knelt, the blood fell. I mean, you know, great, great group. Arthur, who's some of the ones you remember from traveling around from place to place and seeing them and all that good stuff? Well, you know, there's there's a lot that, uh, you know, my generation came along and the majority of, uh, of, of the, the groups and artists now that are my generation 
you know, within five or six years, we started about the same time. And most of us were in our teens or very early 20s, below 25 for sure. And, um, you know, you, you've you know, you got Carol, Karen Peck. Yeah. Uh, Gerald Wolf. Yeah. Uh, you know, that are that have gone on. Mark Trammell, you yeah. know, started as a kid with the Senators, you know, and, 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 and look at, you know, look at him now going in the Hall of Fame. You know, he's made a career out of this uh, this music and and uh there there are tons of of uh a great singers that are still doing it uh you know the, the cooks yeah and uh, those boys i mean those boys could sing those boys, they they could sing phone book man they're just great <laughs> they're good now well i mean play anything that that they can that talented they can. bunch talented bunch as an overall group though can you think of any groups that were, like we talked about the Greens, they all were teens at the time. They were all under 25. Arthur, can you think, I mean, the inspirations, you could put an argument in for them. Oh, absolutely. Mar- Martin, yeah, every one of them. Yeah, were every one of them except for started. Martin. You know, but yeah, Martin, Martin, was, was, Martin, Martin was, was their teacher. He was their teacher. How old yep. was Martin, I wonder, when he started? Uh, Charlie, you got Ma- any idea? Martin couldn't have been more than probably 25, 26 or 7, yeah. something, somewhere in there. Yeah. Who else are some of those groups that y'all can think of? Right well, one that comes right off the top of your head is the is the Kings Boys. Yeah, uh, that came along, and that was kind of, um, you know, that that kind of uh, was the brainchild of, uh, of, of of Jim Hamill. Yeah, uh, kind of putting those boys together, and you know, we we kind of carried them along with us uh, for uh, many years, and until they kind of came in to their own and they were you know able to kind of take off on their you know do their own stuff and um now they ride the bus with you or did their parents take them? they rode the bus with us for a while and then uh, I finally you, t- tell the truth right oh, here in front Lord. of god and everybody <laughs> did y'all did y'all absolutely hate it when they got on the bus be honest don't you i mean you ain't got to pick nobody by name but did y'all actually look at each other when hamill said now the boys are going to be with us today Y'all, I, I bet Ray Dean and you guys looked at each other like, oh, crap. <laughs> oh, it was always it was always interesting. You know, cause boys are boys, boy, and you put them together, and man, alive, you know, <laughs> they ain't no telling what they're going to be up to. And you and, know, grown men in there talking to boys. Uh, and, oh it, Lord, how mercy! Was, we won't go there today, will we? It, it, it was some time, you know. <laughs> they had a it's great like, song. I came though. on the road, to get away from the kids. Now I go. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. They had a great song, if I remember it right. Charlie, tell me if I'm wrong. Jesus Heroes. Isn't that what it was called? Coach went something like, what we need is more Jesus Heroes. Do you remember that song? I remember that song, uh, but I believe that was a little later in their career. The The thing that I, uh, of course, they did Go Jonah, and uh, but then they were just known for resurrecting uh, the old Oak Ridge Boys. Uh, comedy routine of doing uh, go out to the program and they updated it and where the where the Oaks imitated people like the Spears and the Blackwoods the Chuck Wagon Gang and the Statesman uh, the Kings Boys did uh, um, the Hensons and uh, I remember they did the Hensons really well too yeah but uh, then they did uh, several others but then uh, they always closed it out with uh, doing the Kingsman. They would take their coats off and uh, stuff them under their shirts to make them look big. And, shake uh, hands with the poor boy. Yeah, and they would sing Shake Hands with the Poor Boy. That's cool. And the yeah. bass singer had Ray Dean just nailed to the wall. I mean, oh, he yeah. was perfect. The little wiggle of his finger to everything, yeah. jumping out in the yeah. crowd. Arthur, what they, they kind of went through that. that they kind of went through that, that the same thing as a lot of uh, child you know pop stars or country stars that start out young Mm -hmm. and 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 a lot of a lot of their youth uh brings them notoriety when they grow out of that that kind of wanes a little bit and and so they kind of fade off and then and they were kind of uh, you know, I hate this because they they really there toward the end, and then and then when they changed their name to Chronicle, they were really a good sounding uh, quartet. They really sounded good. They had good material, and they were kind of holding their own, you know. And it just kind of it just just never quite worked the same uh, afterwards, you know, because they'd kind of grown out of that kid phase, and uh, um, 
and uh, you know you you see that and uh, and and see that it happens and it was it was kind of a sad sad to see because I really I really thought that they would you know kind of kind of grow and and continue on as 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 Chronicle but uh, uh, but you know it's, it's just, one of them yeah. even wrote for the Singing News for a while yeah I'm trying to think yeah. of his name right off the top of my head I can't recall uh, but, well uh, a couple couple of them uh, did I, I actually uh, Jason Camp you know was with yeah. for so long and and jason wrote an article and then uh, um da, 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 kenyon clark uh the piano player you know wrote an article and, yeah um the bass singer gosh, i can't remember his name now the first bass singer kind well, of wrote some stuff so several of them you know were they were really you know really a, a huge part of our our industry at that well, time arthur you're a true gentleman because anybody else that rode that kingsman bus if i asked them about the king's boys they would have said I couldn't stand them boys on here. They drove me crazy. We couldn't do nothing when they was on the bus. Da 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 da. Well, I know I, I was a kid at one time, and I know, I know my dad and and our tenor singer, bass singer. I know they hated me being around too. So I kind of I can kind of remember that, and I kind of hope that you know I, what one group that we did not mention, brothers, one brother and two sisters out of a little place in Arkansas that come on in youth and gospel music and are still together today and arguably one of the best, if not the best a cappella singers in the history of gospel music or Christian music as a whole that I don't think we've ever talked about too much on SGMA is the Martins. Oh, yeah. And they, I mean, they, those kids, I remember singing with those kids when they first started and, and, uh, and I mean, they were kids, man. But boy, they could sing. I mean, they 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 were great singers and and just great kids uh, uh, coming up. I love the Martins. They're just super folks, and I just I'm just so proud of how the Lord has used them through the years. And man, I mean, they have reached farther than than many uh, many many of us wish that we could have. Yeah, Char- Charlie, <laughs> let me ask you this: When was the first time you saw the Martins? First time I saw the Martins, uh, strangely enough that we've got Arthur on here, I was standing in the Kingsman booth um, talking to Anthony, and this gentleman walked by in overalls and a straw hat and had his teeth out, and he was saying, <laughs> y'all need to come see my kids sing, y'all need to come see my kids sing, y'all need to come see my kids sing. He was going around to every booth just promoting his kids. And I looked, I looked at Anthony and said, who in the world is that? He said, I don't know his name, but you need to go hear his kids sing. And I thought he was just being funny, you know, and just kind of yeah. going on with him. But yeah. no, Anthony, Anthony knew him <laughs> and knew that those kids could sing. And boy, when I went, it seemed like, um, of course, this was in Nashville. And uh, there wasn't a lot of showcases going on back then, but there was some sort of a showcase or something that one of the companies did, and they were on it, and I went, and I've been a fan of the Martins ever since. I have always loved the big band sounds. You know, Henson's love that. When he added the drums, man, I was a kid. I thought that was the coolest thing in the world, that a gospel music group got a set of drums. You know, oh, yeah. and we're playing the lead guitar and the steel. And you know, you know what I'm talking about, Arthur. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. for so long, I mean, it was piano only. Then they added a yeah. bass guitar. And they brought that out of the juke joint to let, you know, gospel music play bass guitar. But when they brought the drums, you know, that was really something. But then to go back, I remember the first time I heard the Martins. They did one of those a cappella, praise Father, Son, praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And I was blown away. It was, at, it, it was at that point that I realized if you have a magnificent voice, and you can sing in harmony that you can go places in gospel music. You didn't have to have that fantastic. I mean, it's great to have a fantastic band. Mm-hmm. You know that. I mean, a band makes it easier to sing. I've heard you say that, Arthur. Oh, that yeah. A band makes it so much because they cover up the, the problems. But oh, when yeah. there's when there's nobody there to cover it up, wow. Wow. You yeah, know, when you're, when you're just... Hanging out there by yourself, man. I tell you, it can it can go wrong in a hurry, and 
you know very quickly and and uh, they were they were masters of it they had a they just had a magnetism about them well you know i mean we just talk about it. it's just just it's the anointing and the touch you know yeah. and and our music you know and the, the lord touches uh, certain ones and and uh, that anointing is on them and you can see it and and um you know uh, folks are drawn to them and drawn to the message and that's uh, that's what makes them great third generation one girl's a little past 25 but we'll give her a we'll give her a pass on this because she's fixing to get married Mm -hmm. but somebody we need we we would be amiss not to bring up is uh amber and autumn Mm -hmm. the Neelands. yes i mean i I think one of the coolest things and and y'all may not know this but i I know this because todd is such a good friend of mine and kelly's such a good friend of mine but rex was a bigger fan of styles if Rex was going to listen to music, let me just say this. Rex was listening to Doyle Lawson and Quicksilver and the Primitive. That was mm-hmm. what Rex liked. Mm-hmm. So it is so cool to me to see Autumn now playing the mandolin. Mm-hmm. Because that's what her, going. That's because yep. her grandfather, you know. Yep. And I don't know if okay. she did it because full, full of circle. The, I didn't know if she did it because of that. But it's awesome. It's yep. awesome. Yeah, it really is. And and uh, man, they're doing such a great job uh, too. I mean, they're just—I love to hear them sing. They can ever more smoke. They can do some acapella stuff too. Yeah, they can. Yeah, they can. They can do some great and, stuff. And give, I tell you, and give Jason credit where credit's I, due. I, I mean, was just fixing to say that right there. Jason is is a great arranger, and uh, uh, he's blend in that. You know how to work that in and how to work that acapella stuff in, and and uh, he is just um, he's a great singer. Yeah. Very underrated singer. Yeah. Charlie? I was just thinking of uh, two other family groups that had kids. And uh, when you mentioned Autumn, um, some of her big heroes um, and influences are the Isaacs. Bingo. I remember uh, yep. 1988, uh, I was one of the first promoters to ever bring the Isaacs down from uh, Morrow, Ohio. Uh, they were they were actually not even called the Isaacs. They were still called the Sacred Bluegrass. Or Joe Isaacs and the Sacred Bluegrass, and it was uh, Joe and Lily, and um, Randy Fox with the Primitives, and a guy named Tim Caudle, and of course the kids were with them. And when they put them up to sing, they just blew mom and dad and the other guys off the stage. Everybody in here in Atlanta loved them. So in just a matter of a year or so, yep. they had, they were the same had, way. Yeah, yeah, they had they evolved the into they just came on, and when when they you know, when they came on, it was just a, it was just wide open after yeah. that. Arthur, as a seasoned veteran, okay, and as a veteran of the Kingsman, the Kingdom Heirs, your family group singing at Dollywood, have you ever, you know, have you? And, and I'll parallel this with sports, okay. I've dealt with a lot of professional athletes in my business, who, when they get in their late thirties, early forties. They see these young kids coming along out of college or entering into the game, and they're awestruck. They're like, "When I was that age, I couldn't do that." Oh, is there every any, day. anybody every that comes? That's what I was about to ask you. Who comes to mind for you today when you're sitting there thinking that? Well, I I, I, I tell you, just about all these kids coming on nowadays to sing circles around us. I mean, they just they're so. Uh, you know, they do stuff with their voice that I never even thought about doing, you know, and, uh, and these arrangements and stuff that can help, you know, some of it has to do with producing and, 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 you know, having a great arranger and producer. Uh, but, uh, these family groups, a lot of that stuff is put together, you know, just as a family. Yeah. Uh, but man, I mean, tell you, I've some of these, some of these singers, man, I'm, t- I'm blown away every day. You know, I'm, I'm lucky to just get up there and do what I can do. <laughs> and, well, and, let me let me I'm, ask you. Let me ask you about one of these groups, okay? I'm gonna throw this one out there because I can't believe we hadn't named this. When these guys came on the scene, they didn't just walk in the front door; they busted the front door down, and as we say, kick butt and took names because their daddy's sitting there writing number one hits. They're singing stronger than anybody else. Every one of them but one could play an instrument. They had the spiritual anointing of somebody 40 years older than what they had. And y'all know who I'm talking about, and that's the Crab family. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, what was your what first you thought when you seen Jason? Because I've heard so many performers say about Jason, his voice is going to wear out. He's not going to be able to do this in 20 years. Jason told me himself that he had people when he was 14 years old telling him, son, you're going to wear your voice out by the time you're 24. But Jason's eh, maybe 40-something now. Mm -hmm. And Jason ain't much different at 40-something than he was at 14. No, he's just as strong as he was. Um, Lord, yeah, I heard that, that coming up, you know, when they first started, you know. And, in fact, I was just talking to somebody else this afternoon about the Crab family and how they got started. And, and you know, when they came, uh, when they came on, you know, they did uh, traditional uh, uh, Southern gospel stuff to kind of mm-hmm. get to build their fan base and to to build an audience that just fell in love with them. And then once they got that audience, then they were able to kind of intermingle these new songs and this new style and 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 well they just you know people just automatically loved whatever they did because they loved them yeah and uh you know i i i, I heard that about jason and i would always and people say that and i'd always go it, you know what it's his technique he's got it he's got it down and i said it wouldn't surprise me if he sang like that till he's 90 years old He's just got a technique down. It doesn't hurt him. Uh, you know, I never heard him. I never heard him hoarse. No. Uh, and we, you know, we worked with him quite a bit when they were first starting out. And uh, I never heard him come off stage hoarse. I never heard him, you know, like he was strained himself. You know, it sounded kind of like it. But when you know, when you can tell when you walk off stage and and somebody's you know spitting blood, they're, <laughs> they're not singing right. You know, that's right. And and they're not going to last. You know, I'm gonna mention. And, uh, uh, yeah, I'm gonna mention. I, I, go ahead. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Go ahead. No, 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 no. I, I was just going to say a lot of that. I think has to do with with um, the I, you know the Lord's touch on a lot of that stuff. You know, is 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 uh, sometimes it's it's overlooked. Um, you know, I, I, can't I downplay it. You can't downplay it at all. Well, you, you really can't. You really can't because, you know, you, 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 you're supposed to be wholeheartedly about everything that you do about the Lord and the work of the Lord. And so if you go in there half-hearted about something, you know, the Lord's not going to bless that. Uh, but if you, you know, I try to walk up the stage every day knowing that i did the very best that i could at that you know for today Mm -hmm. it may not been the best but it was the best that i could do for today yeah and uh and when i you know come off stage i'm not i'm not down on myself because i feel like i gave my best to the lord and i feel like and he has blessed me and with longevity and allowed me to continue and um and i think that that has a lot to do with it it really does Charlie, I'm going to bring somebody up that you know. Arthur, you know them because they were from Western uh, North Carolina, more than likely. But this group, I think, they were 10 years ahead of their time. I believe if the children were out there today, gospel music would accept them in a different way when I bring this group up. But I remember back when their grandmother sang with them, the Jody Brown Indian family. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they were. Their music was just just kind of over everybody's head, and it was great stuff. I mean, I mean that good, girl the writing was unique, and, and my, I, I I agree with you. I think I think you're right. I think if they would have held that another three or four years, it would have it would have caught on, I, and I think they would have been fine. Yeah, I totally agree with that. I think, um, and 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 this is nothing that I haven't actually said to them. You know, is if you would have just slid into it a, a little more gradually but it was just like flipping a switch uh you went to see them one time and they were doing that old appalachian gospel and then the next time they were doing this amazing wonderful new music but it just wasn't as accepted well, well, well yeah. they kind of did the exact the they kind of did the opposite of what the crab family did yeah. they didn't build that fan base that loved them for who they were uh soon enough Mm-hmm. To where that they could could actually incorporate that music and kind of mix that music in, and then and then build upon that, then people would have loved it. They would. Well, have, I, I, I will tell you it. this. I'm gonna tell you how long. My daughter's 22. She was six years old when we saw them, 
and she wanted to play the mandolin like Jody's daughter did. Okay, mm-hmm. Stephanie. Stephanie. Yeah. She wanted to play the mandolin. So I still own the mandolin I went and bought for her to take lessons. Ain't nobody never played the mandolin, but you know, Kendall went to a few lessons. To, but but she was so that that she was so out front with that, Arthur, that that wasn't funny. But if you think about Jody's mother, and the lady would get up there with them big crocodile tears at Bryson City and other places when it was the Brown Indian family, and cry and sing and just rear back. It was almost like two different groups all together. Yeah, it really was. So, yeah, it really was. And, I mean, their stuff, I mean, you can go back and play their stuff now, and it's relevant. Yeah. A lot of good groups, a lot of great young people. I'm sure we miss somebody. I'm sure somebody out there is saying, well, you didn't name my kid. Why not? And uh, Oh, I've got one right here. Okay, who did we name? Hey, when I was growing up, Every teenage boy had a picture of Farrah Fawcett on their wall. No. I had Candy Hemphill. <laughs> Candy Hemphill. Oh, absolutely. He's still working on me, Charlie. <laughs> y'all used to say y'all used to say she's still working on me because y'all see her picture. Y'all would all be so impressed. <laughs> I tell you why, some some I can't remember who we've talked about so far. <laughs> <laughs> I, can't even, I, don't, I don't even remember if we mentioned Karen Beck. I mean, Karen. yeah, we we talked yeah, about briefly, Karen. Briefly, we I talked think. about Karen, but uh, and, you know, it's fun. It's fun to talk about these folks. It's fun to to see where the Lord's took take them, took yep. them, take them to whatever. I'm just killing the English language, but it's fun to talk. It really is. Yep. I mean, there's there's a lot of good folks out there. We could we could mention a lot more people. The Mullins come to mind. You know, a lot of other oh, yeah. uh, other groups, you know, back in the day come to mind. They but, were another group that was kind of ahead of their time, yeah, too. Yeah, they were. They were. Sunday Drive, throw them. They yep. were ahead of their time. So, yep. uh, anyway, but but you know what? Here's the great thing about gospel music. It's growing. People it are loving it. And, and, it's, and it's the future looks bright. It really does. looks I bright. Mean, we're going to take a break. I want to remind everybody, Jason Crabb. We, we we were just talking about Jason. <coughs> we're going. To, Jason Crabb will be at Carriage Key Woodstock, July the eighth, and we'll have Jason there. Free concert put on by Kia and Woodstock Kia. You don't want to miss it. Also, My Pillow. You heard the advertisement earlier. Go to My Pillow's website. Hit the code S G N P. Here's an interview we did earlier today with. Jacob and Eli with one of the Singing News newcomer groups of the year, the top ten, Children of the Promise. Eli's 14, Jacob's 19. I think you'll enjoy their story. Let's take a break, pay some bills, come back, you'll hear Jacob and Eli on SGNP. Because of you, Carriage Kia in Woodstock is doing great. And to celebrate Kia, America's best value summer event, Kia of Woodstock presents a free concert Sunday, July 8th at 5 p.m. with gospel music's Jason Crabb. Bring your lawn chair, picnic, church group, youth group, and fellowship with Carriage Kia of Woodstock on our dealership lot under the big top. Need a new or used car? Visit us. Need a great family outing? Come see Jason Crabb free from your friends at SGNP and Carriage Kia of Woodstock. For more info, visit Southern Gospel News Podcast com or on Facebook or as always stop by and see our partners 24/7 at carriagekiawoodstock.com and welcome back to SGNP Darren Sutherland here and today I'm gonna go right down highway 278 we're located in Marietta Georgia and I'm talking a little bit too close to home now but we're gonna move on out to Polk County Georgia and talk to and our youth and gospel music and these two guys are really taking off children of the promise eli and jacob how you guys doing today friends doing good how are you doing good. doing good jacob and eli first off jacob i'm gonna let you stand to the side for just a second i gotta ask eli something first off okay eli how old are you 13 14 how old are you i'm um, 14 years old 14 years old you are the youngest person ever to appear on Southern Gospel News Podcast. What about that? Well, I'm honored. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you this real quick, Eli. Most 14-year-olds are playing video games, are going to the skating ring, playing baseball, playing football, basketball, soccer, playing the trumpet in the band. 
you're singing gospel music all the time. Yes, sir. What made you? What 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 drove you to sing gospel music? Well, you know, my family they've always done it, and I don't know. It's just always kind of been in me. Yeah. You know, I just always loved it. So it never really clicked with me. Oh, I want to do it. It's just always been in me. <laughs> it's always been there, huh? Now, what do you like to do outside of gospel music? I mean, you've made a quick name for yourself in the business. I mean, you were, you, you guys were top ten this year in the, in the singing news fan awards for favorite new groups. But what else does Eli like to do other than sing? I like to do a lot of stuff. I like to swim, and I love to be out. I love to be outside. Yeah. You know. Cool. But, Mostly just sing. <laughs> Mostly just sing. Jacob, 19 years old, man. I'm, I'm assuming you've graduated. I have. I graduated a few years ago and oh. uh, currently looking at college options and everything. So just kind of rolling with the punches. Ro- roll, well, I'll ask you the same thing I just e- asked Eli. You know, man, 19 years old. Let, let's just face it. I look back when I was 19 years old. I was working at Cobb EMC on a power line, okay? And I was thinking, <laughs> man alive, what would I do? And I was chasing girls, and I was this, that, and another. What does Jacob do outside of gospel music? I like to go see movies with friends and a family and stuff and just have a good time with my family. We, we, we usually stay together a lot. It's what we like to do. So, You guys got any hobbies? You collect anything? Yes, sir. Uh, I collect knives. Uh, nah. And John Wayne memorabilia. Okay. What's your best knife you've got, Jacob? Uh, I have a, a Krieger. I don't know if you've ever seen, like, the rainbow metal. Yeah, I know exactly but what that it's, is. It's like that. And it's very uh, detailed engravings on it and everything. And it was actually given to me by uh, a man that we sang at his church. And he found out I collected knives. And we just kind of got along real great. And he gave it to me as a gift. And it, it's, it, it holds a lot of sentimental value yeah. because was from him you know but it also it, it's a really pretty knife so it's it's one of my favorites that's cool who's your favorite singer oh man that's a hard question <laughs> um it, it, it don't have to be a gospel music singer at that either i mean it can be anybody because we've all got favorite singers. like me i love the primitive okay that's just one of my favorite groups to listen to but at the same time i love to hear mac powell sing or with third day or i love to hear carrie underwood sing so, you know, everybody's a little different. So, you know. Right. I got to say, one of one of my favorite people to listen to sing, I like Ronnie Booth because I can, I, I like his voice because of my baritone voice. And yeah. I really look up to him and use him as inspiration. I like Greater Vision, of course. Yeah. Uh, Mark Trammell as well, because I think he has a, a great voice. And they they all are really are really good at ministering to people and also entertaining them in a way that is fit to be in church. You know, yeah. it's it's easy to entertain people, but you also have to minister to them and really show them the love of God and what it's really about. Eli, I'll ask you the same question, my man. You said you've always been around it, so you can't give me the excuse that you don't have a favorite. Because if you've always been around it, you got one person you like more than others all right i got the answer (laughs) so (laughs) i already know hands down karen peck for sure karen peck why do you like karen peck so much i don't know it's just her heart is on the right thing you know her mind she's all she has great voice she's just great you know what's your favorite karen peck song because i got one no that one is a hard one (laughs) that one is a hard one probably her new song hope for all nations yeah I will give both of y'all a little hint on something, okay? When I was interviewing Karen about a month and a half ago as she was going into the Gospel Music Association Hall of Fame, and she was getting an award, I said, Karen, how do you and Susan, your sister, pick your newest member? I mean, you've had guys come and go and different ones through the years. And she said, well, when they come and try out, if they know all of our music and can blend well with them, with us, that gives them a heads up. So I don't know if y'all are ever going to go try out. I'm not telling you to do this because y'all are doing so well with Children of the Promise. But if you ever go try out with her, Eli, make sure you know her music before you show up. Is that a deal? <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> and I've listened to her enough. I'll probably know them all. Oh, you, me. He, he knows the songs just fine. There you go. There you go. <laughs> what's, the, what, what's y'all's favorite thing about traveling around and singing gospel music? Mine is probably just being with family. 
I think that you touch someone, not you, but the yeah. Lord uses you to touch someone's life, and you really see just how much they needed that, and it makes every long trip and all the pains of travel, <laughs> as I'm sure you're aware, it, it gets hard sometimes, but it really makes it all worth it to see just how much it meant to them that you did what you were supposed to do, that you listened to the Lord and... It, it helps us go on to see that in other people's lives, and I think that's that's probably the best part. You mentioned me. you mentioned the uh, phrase "pains of travel," Jacob, and I want to ask you about that. All right. Is it is it is it fun actually going from place to place, or does it just get monotonous and boring on that bus or car or however, van, however y'all travel? Sometimes when you just see those yellow lines after yellow lines after yellow lines, what do you do to pass the time? Oh, man. You know, it, it does. Sometimes it's monotonous. You know, when you do it a lot, uh, sometimes it's seven, eight-hour drives one way. And it gets hard to sit in the back of a we, – we drive a truck and a trailer. And yeah. it, it gets hard, three three people in the back of the truck. But we we really just <laughs> – we make each other laugh and try to – Make it, it makes it a lot easier. I think it, it also helps that we're family, so we can talk about things, you know. And yeah. it, it's just one of those things that it is hard sometimes, but it's also it's also a blessing in its own way. Yeah, yeah. You're building memories that you'll have for a lifetime, without a doubt. And we've seen things that we could write a book and make <laughs> make a lot of people laugh. Talking about making people laugh. Eli, I'm going to put you on the spot. You ready? Uh-oh. <laughs> Here we go. What is the funniest thing that you've seen happen at a place y'all were singing? And where was it? Do you recall? <laughs> there, there's been a lot. I mean, there is a lot. Jacob was right on that one. We could write a book. I mean. <laughs> J- Jacob, do you have one in particular you can think of? I, I think so. Uh, we were we were singing at a church, and all of a sudden, during one of the songs, Eli's microphone started going out. So we were kind of freaking out a little bit. <laughs> Because we we are not great with sound equipment, <laughs> so I hand him my microphone and get his, and I'm trying to fix it. So I'm just standing there on the stage trying to fix his microphone, singing my part, but no one can hear me. Mm-hmm. And they just are looking at me all funny, like I'm insane because they don't know what to do. And so I go over to the board and I'm trying to fix it and everything. And then we change microphones; it still doesn't work, and we change it back, and it it, it was. It was an interesting time for sure. Fun, fun. Guys, 14 and 19 years old, how long y'all plan on continuing doing this, you think? I'd say until the Lord tells me to stop. Eli? Same thing. Eli, let me ask you this right here. 14. I went right. through I went through this. A lot of people go through this. Jacobs went through this. Do you ever worry that your voice may change as you grow older? I worry about it. But, I mean, I've heard it, you know, from fans and people that they'll come up they'll say what are you going to do when that voice changes but i just tell them i tell that same answer i say you know i'm just going to sing what the voice god gives me good answer what's the best place where, where's your what's been y'all's most favorite place to sing so far several of those but um singing in the sun and myrtle beach is probably our favorite i guess so you get to go to the beach i mean you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there's all kind of good good things well, guys, thank you so much for taking your time to be with us today and uh, telling us a little bit about Children of the Promise. Tell the folks out there when they come here, Children of the Promise, what they should expect, Jacob and Eli. We're going to sing with everything we got. We're going to sing from our heart. We're going to do whatever the Lord tells us to do because that's what he's called us to do. Eli, what should we expect from you in the coming years, my man? Well, hopefully get a blessing. <laughs> There you go. There you go. Well, guys, again, thank you for taking your time today to be with us on SGMP, and we look forward to meeting you down the road. Fun enough? Well, thank you so much. All right. All right, guys. Bye-bye. Children of the Promise, give them a listen when you can. Check them out in their area. Eli, boy, he's got a, he's got a high voice, don't he, Charlie? Oh, yeah, he does. He does. Sing higher than a dog whistle. <laughs> And you know what? I like what he's saying. 
Arthur, he said, and, and, and I don't know if you caught it or not, Arthur, but he, I said, Eli, what do you, I said, I know everybody's going to ask you about this, but what are you going to do when your voice changes? And he said, I'm just going to keep singing for the Lord. I'm going to sing for the Lord, sing as long as the Lord wants me to. So, yeah. I mean, somebody's trained the kid, right? Yeah. I mean, you just don't say that on, you know, on interview. I mean, yeah. it ain't like everyday 14-year-olds are doing interviews on TV. So, right. I just, yeah. I, I just hope, hope they can keep on going. Don't you, Charlie? I do. And, and about his voice, um, I'm privileged to get to see him periodically. And he sings very technically very well. I don't think he's got anything to worry about. I think, I think that voice is going to stay high for him. Charlie, I'm not going to put Arthur on the spot. I'm going to put you on the spot. Can I do that? Sure. When people go see Children of Their Promise, are they going to see Nikki or are they going to see Eli and Jacob? <laughs> In, in, in the words of your friend and mine, <laughs> Reverend Hovey Lister, yeah. yes and yes. <laughs> Can't nobody sing the glory down like Nicky Shaw. Oh, that's funny. That's I'm glad funny. he picked you and not me. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? My, my grandmama used to tell me you go to hell for lying same as you do cheating and stealing, Arthur. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, I'm teasing. Good, they're good folks. Good folks. And uh, glad, glad that Eli and Jacob could be on the show today. Guys, this has been fun talking about youth and gospel music. Next week, we've got the Mylon Hayes family. We've got their kids on. Wendy, oh, we, we, Wendy t- I talked to Wendy about it. And Wendy says, yep, schedule it. So hopefully they can be with us next Monday. And we do it. And she said, they just love talking about gospel music. They'll be so excited. And that daughter of theirs, I've heard her sing. She can Kennedy, rip it. yeah. She can rip it. Yeah, she oh, can. Oh, yeah. She can Absolutely. rip it. And Absolutely. if I'm not mistaken, the boys have wrote a couple. Yeah, I, I, think, I think they are writing. And I know they're definitely amazing musicians. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. anyway, I can't wait to ask them which one's going to get married first. <laughs> out of the two boys. They're both like 19, 20, something like yeah. that. We can pick <laughs> on them. <laughs> That's the fun thing about an 18, 19, or 20-year-old. It's fun to pick on them. So anyway, oh, yeah. Because we was once there. I still go back to, I wish we would have had a microphone on the bus with the Kingsman and the Kings boys. Oh, my. <laughs> oh, my. Or a YouTube camera. What about a YouTube camera, Arthur? Would that oh, have been Lord. better? It's probably a good thing we didn't have YouTube back then. <laughs> Facebook <laughs> Live. <laughs> but you know what? If they would have had a Facebook Live back then, or a GoPro. Oh, or a GoPro. <laughs> That, that could have been bad. <laughs> Y'all want to have to take that chimney out of the bus. We'll leave that at that. So, anyway, guys, enjoyed it as always. Arthur, thank you, my friend. All righty. Yeah, buddy. Enjoy. Talk to, talk to you soon. Come see what all the smoke is about at Tony Gore's Barbecue and Grill in the heart of the Smokies, Sevierville, Tennessee. Start off with T's loaded tater chips, some great sweet tea, then have some of his famous fried chicken, a pulled or sliced pork plate, or the best barbecue ribs in the Smokies. And oh, did we mention homemade mac and cheese? And dessert lovers, it's worth the trip just for a piece of cake. Voted the best barbecue in the Smokies, Tony Gore's Barbecue and Grill in Sevierville, Tennessee. And remember, gospel music fans, you never know who you'll see while at Tony Gore's Barbecue and Grill. For more information, visit them 24-7 at TonyGore.com. SGNP is excited you chose to listen today. If you'd kindly leave a remark and rating in the podcast remarks section, we surely would appreciate it. Please share with a friend or family member. Look for us on Facebook, Twitter, and our new website, southerngospelnewspodcast.com. And remember the Kia Summer Nights concert series, all 100% free, coming to a town near you. For more information on the concert series or to advertise your products, services, concert event, or new project on SGNP and reach a 100% guaranteed number of people in your area, call Tim Newton at 770-874-3200 or email him today, tnewton at bgadgroup.com. Let us geotarget our ads for you, something radio nor magazine can do. 